go to our Q&A session, and uh, folks in the audience, still time to submit a question to our speakers using the chat window. To see it, you'll need to press Launchful Experience and select the Q&A tab to type your question. We do have a few minutes left, and uh, Deborah, uh, since uh, you just spoke and you were talking about uh, Zoom and so forth, I'm going to start the round of questions with you, and we're going to let everybody weigh on on this. So in general, you think COVID-19 is going to have long-term effects on FINRA arbitration, and do you think hearings by Zoom or by remote appearance are fed, or are they going to be the new normal? You know, I believe now that the, with courts using Zoom, actually, I think more successfully than arbitra- arbitrations, just because it's one judge you know, and the judge has has a whole IT staff. But I think uh, regardless of COVID, I think there is probably going to be a push, um, certainly from a cost perspective, as Margaret pointed out, to do as many of these hearings as you can uh, electronically, if you can do it, if the parties agree, if there's not a lot of witnesses, if it's not a complex case, it certainly will um, will make it cheaper for everybody. Oh, thank you for that, Deborah. We're going to go through the uh, panel uh, in the order they spoke. Margaret, uh, uh, what, what's your take on that, uh, the whole thing about long-term effects of COVID-19 and hearings by Zoom or remote appearance? Yes. I mean, just to be brief, um, two things. One is most of the arbitrators historically are in the older category, and so I think they're in the high-risk populations. And FINRA, you know, has its various national places, um, but usually plane travel can be involved. Those are big, big obstacles that are not going to go away in the short term. I think the whole world will get more used to uh, virtual platforms. The one thing I wanted to add to um, what uh, Deborah said, and, and I know, you know, my favorite part of this whole day is the FINRA gone wild. Um, but in addition to doing your arbitrator due diligence, and I think Deborah implied this, you know, know when to go, right? Know when, see, when it's tanking, and you can tell when it's tanking. When you're in session number 63, um, or when you have an arbitrator who has shut off the screen to you, or I was in one where an arbitrator literally took their chair and faced the corner, you know it's going to be a train wreck, and don't assume it's going to be a wreck in your favor. And so, you know, settle the thing. Um, get other ways to get out because, as Deborah said, um, trying to to vacate a really bad award is a really big uphill expensive battle that's not going to happen. So those same rules apply on the virtual platform where it may be a little more difficult to get the read of which arbitrator has kind of uh, lost. Thank you, uh, Margaret. Now we're going to turn to Jeff Plotkin now. Uh, your thoughts on uh, uh, this whole issue about uh, COVID-19's long-term effects and Zoom or remote appearances? Well, I think that uh, it will be with us for a while. I think we're all hopeful that um, the uh, virus will cycle out of our system uh, within a short period, uh, but anybody who's tried to cross-examine a witness via a video conference or telephone call knows just how difficult it is. Um, and I think that it, when things do start to get a little better and the virus has subsided a little bit, I think folks that don't want to expose their clients or their witnesses to rigorous in-person cross-examination will raise the COVID concern uh, a card, and uh, I think uh, panelists on an arbitration panel will be hard pressed to force anybody's hand to come in if they are raising what appears to be, on its face, a legitimate concern about their health. So I'm I'm concerned about the quality of uh, you know losing the quality of the in-person experience. And uh, thanks for that, uh, Jeff. And uh, Tracy Salmon Smith, I wanted to give you your chance to weigh in on that question. Sure. Thank you, Sal. Um, I also, you know, I think that these uh, Zoom hearings will be with us for a while, and I think it will be a valid option, you know, even after we kind of go back to some in person hearings. Um, I think primarily because of the cost factor and the travel factor, um, because I personally, I have mediation, uh, mediations and arbitrations all around the country. So um, if you talk about sort of 
saving some money. I think it'll be important, um, an important option. But like Jeff points out, it is very difficult to cross-examine someone in, in that manner. And um, also for the arbitrator to really look into someone's eyes to see whether they are being truthful or not, because that's part of what the arbitrators are doing is, you know, assessing credibility. So it's, it's a little harder. Courts are doing it, so I'm sure that FINRA will will manage and will get used to it, but it will definitely be an option going forward.